Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to have you here to present you our presentation, Full Stack Image Genetics for Crop Breeding uh, of Hyphen. It was a presentation we were supposed to make at PAG and that we will do here um, as PAG was consulted. So my name is Alexis Komar. I have a PhD in plant phenotyping and I'm currently the CEO of Hyphen, Hyphen being a company specialized in high throughput phenotyping and making a lot of research on how we can improve um, high throughput phenotyping for our customers. Uh, we work at Hyphen with all types of sensors, which are satellites, drones, phenomobiles, where we have a special license within high Navalis and other IoT devices in order to be able to measure prints for different types of businesses like uh, sense businesses, breeding businesses, but also agro-industries. For instance, work with Machoma. Hyphen is made of uh, more than 20 people uh, from around the globe. So we have people from Germany, um, Taiwan, uh, Brazil, uh, Tunisia, etc. to try to tackle and actually to succeed in tackling uh, most of the phenotyping issues our customer proposes. Today, the discussion is uh, going to be about how um, phenotyping can be uh, used and, and image analytics behind it. So the first thing is really to go back to the basic equation, phenotype equals genotypes times environment, with environment being at the same time the pedoclimatic information, such as the quantity of light intercepted by the canopy, the wind, the temperature, but also the agricultural practices, uh, which are having a huge impact on that. The genotype, well, actually, the genotype is much more complex than just genes. It's the genes, but also uh, the control of the genes expressions, which can have um, different ways. But all of this is what we will call the, the genotype. and is interesting. And the interesting between genotypes and environment is what creates the phenotype. And the phenotype is really about, uh, about uh, measurements that we can make and that we can quantify on uh, your plants. Of course, at the end of the day, what most people are interested in is about yield, which is the most obvious phenotype. But you can subdivide it uh, in limiting factors to be able to buy for instance, measure liver index, uh, plant volume, organs number, disease quantifications, chlorophyll content, and so on. And in order to be able to measure the phenotypes, well, you need to assess traits. And traits is the, um, the combination of a sensor and of methods. So let's look a little bit at that. When we speak about traits, it's all what we already described and much more. Um, and, and those traits, uh, will depend also on the phenological stage of your plants uh, as they will evolve. Uh, for instance, you will have tillering in wheat, where uh, you will have first the number of plants that emerge, but it will not be linked completely to the number of wheat ears, etc. The sensors, well, today, most of the sensors used are imaging sensors. That's why we say we have a full stack imaging solutions, but uh, it's much broader than that, so we can think about 3D uh, sensors like uh, LiDARs, etc., uh, multispectral uh, sensors, so to have it in different uh, wave bands. In general, uh, there is six dimensions in high throughput phenotyping, and uh, which are uh, an image, uh, a 3D image, uh, an orientation of this 3D point cloud. Um, the, the wavelengths on which you measure with 3D point clouds and time because uh, the plant can evolve very fast uh, with the same biophysical parameters. All of that is being monitored by all the sensors we're using. And finally, methods. Uh, generally, we use uh, three main methods in order to do high throughput phenotyping. The first one is simple geometric interpretations that can go very far and that, use, and that works very well, especially with 3D sensors, like being able to compute biovolume, so it is very linked to biomass, uh, to be able to compute um, VIs, vegetation indices like NDVA, etc. Then we can use also some um, some modeling, so some mechanistical modeling, so to be able to describe 
processes for equations and then to invert the model in order to be able to retrieve some traits. Uh, this is also something that is widely used and, and really well validated, especially in the remote sensing community. And finally, for the last five to 10 years, uh, machine learning in general and deep learning in particular has been a method that has completely revolutionized all the type of traits you can extract from sensors uh, in general. So once now that we explain you uh, all what we can do with a phenotype and with the traits and all the sensors and methods that we can use, let's go concretely into two examples uh, of traits that we compute routinely uh, across the world, green fraction and wheat head counts. So let's start with wheat head count. Wheat head count was an extremely complex trait to have because it was really dull to count uh, manually each uh, wheat head where you can have up to 600 wheat heads per meter square. Uh, we were able to take pictures and from those pictures uh, to be able to um, well count all the wheat ears you have. It doesn't look that hard. <laughs> Uh, when you're looking at it in a very simple way, actually uh, a lot of research has been done in it where um, you need to have some training data set that are massive in order to do it. And at Hyphen, we supported uh, um, a global um, initiative, which is called the Global With Data Set, that uh, involved 16 uh, research organization to be able to acquire more than 6,000 images to label almost 300,000 uh, wheat heads. And that allowed us to have some, some wood head counting that works really, really well from smartphones, phenomobiles, uh, which were currently validating on high resolution drones. And we also demonstrated that with entry level drones like Mavic 2 Pro, et cetera, the, the, the counting is um, most of the time doesn't work because the resolution is really at the limit. And if you're not having the proper fungical stage and lightning conditions, well, you will miss a lot of free heads. Uh, all of this has been published and I invite you to to, to contact me or, or hyphen if you want to know more uh, about such initiative like the global wheat head detection data set. The other one uh, of the trait is green fraction. So green fraction is not a trait that is interesting by itself, but it's the basics of the traits that can be used to be able to compute to compute many of our traits. By example, early vigor, senescence, stay green, quantity of energy inserted by the pore, uh, but also to have an idea of how um, water is being used by the plant. Do you have more evapor uh, evaporative surfaces or less, actually transpirative surfaces or less, etc. And to be able to compute green fraction, while well, you have different methods, uh, you can use vegetation indices. The most common one is in DVI, but also vary. You also have some machine segmentation where you will uh, have be pixel based, like you can see in this image. But you can also use some radiative transfer models in order to invert to invert a multispectral uh, signal, and that's really what has been doing for the last 30 years in remote sensing, so through satellites in a very efficient way, and and with different methods. Well, actually, we'll give you the same biophysical variable at, at, at the end, but with different uh, errors and with different um, uh, hypotheses in order to compute it. And being able to understand all that, not working with a black box is really mandatory for you to make good use of this data. And that's what we are working every day hard at Hyphen to provide you. Finally, and I really would like to insist that being able to have all those traits are interesting, but when you want to, when you're working on a breeding program and trying to understand your cultivars and your genotype, generally you want to combine the phenotype and the environment together in order to really describe your genotype. And this means to be able to mix both physical traits with climatic data, in uh, pedoclimatic data, actually, to be able to compute agroclimatic traits. And that's, I think, really the future of high throughput phenotyping for images is to be able to combine all the source of data together in order to uh, make analysis easier. 
And an example that we have been working recently is about being able to assess or at least to evaluate the quantity of water that is being transpirated by a canopy uh, through uh, modeling using drones and uh, weather information. And so that um, allowed us to, to model and also to show that uh, the, the, the canopy that are having the most early vigor are probably the ones that are using the most water during the growing cycle. And uh, this is something that can be extremely des desirable when you're competing with weeds, but it's something that can be not that desired when you're having uh, water limitation that are very strong. Uh, going further than that, plasmodors is what we're currently doing. And, and we can talk of that, of course, on other webinars uh, massively. Finally, really, the, the message that seems to me the, the most important for you to, to, to keep today is, is to really uh, have in mind that today, uh, image analysis uh, for high throughput uh, uh, phenotyping is not research anymore in most cases. A lot of traits has been computed, um, a lot of pipelines are working for hyphen or other companies. And really the, the game now is to bring price down. So at what point, I don't know, it depends on the volume of activity we'll have, but at least that will allow researcher to focus on understanding processes, selecting new cultivars and asking themselves the new scientific questions that they will have to answer to be able to feed the world in a changing world with all the challenges that we all know and that I will not pitch today. Well, at Hyphen, um, we're here to support all that with different uh, tools, but also uh, with final research that is really um, uh, privately found research uh, to collaborate with universities to be able to uh, improve and scale high throughput phenotyping across the globe. Uh, we also have a platform that works quite well, especially to process drone data uh, across the world. Uh, and if you have any, if you want any more information, please contact us. Uh, we will be more than happy to answer it. Have a great day.